Um, so, when people are deficient in vitamin D, we put them on a tablet containing 10,000 international units of cholecalciferol, which is equivalent to 250 micrograms of the stuff. And we make them take this tablet twice weekly. So they usually take it on Monday and then they take it on Friday. And they do that for 12 weeks. And after they've taken that, then we ask their GP, because they're not going to hopefully be in hospital for the full 12 weeks. So they're usually sent home with this. Um, and then we ask their GP to put them on a maintenance supplement thereafter. So maintenance supplement dose of vitamin D is normally around 400 international units, uh, which is the equivalent of 10 micrograms. And you can buy supplements containing this dose over the counter. So if you go into your supermarket and find a vitamin D supplement, usually it will contain 400 international units, 10 micrograms, and it's a daily supplement. So you take that every day thereafter. Now, even people where we measure their vitamin D and it's not deficient, when they have had a fracture, we put them on a, vit on a normal dose vitamin D supplement anyway. So everyone should have this. It's very, very good for you. And indeed, the NHS now advises that the entire population of Britain should be taking a maintenance vitamin D supplement. We should all be buying vitamin D supplements uh, at this dose of 400 international units, 10 micrograms, and taking them daily. Uh, because we're not getting enough vitamin D from the sunlight. And indeed, as you get older, your skin becomes less good at turning, at making vitamin D from cholesterol using ultraviolet radiation. So certainly if you're older, you should be taking a vitamin D supplement with this dose in. Another thing to say is that often people take joint supplements with vitamin D and calcium. And indeed, we often prescribe uh, supplements that contain both vitamin D and calcium in hospital. In fact, I would say it's more common to prescribe a maintenance supplement with this dose of vitamin D in and a bunch of calcium than it is to just prescribe the vitamin D supplement. So some examples of um, brands, Adcal D3 is an example, Calcid D is another example. So there's loads of them. Fear Cal D3 is another one. So there's loads of these supplements that contain both vitamin D and calcium. Now, if you are young, however, I would advise that you just take a vitamin D supplement rather than a vitamin D supplement with calcium in. And the reason is that if you're young, you're very unlikely, unless your diet's very strange, it's very unlikely that you're deficient in calcium. Uh, so you don't need to be taking calcium, um, whereas it's much more likely that you are deficient in vitamin D and you do need to be taking vitamin D. Um, so it, the calcium almost certainly isn't necessary if you're young. The other thing is that these tablets where they have the vitamin D and the calcium are generally massive great tablets, whereas these tablets with just vitamin D and are generally much smaller tablets. So these ones are going to be much, much more difficult to swallow and much less pleasant to take. And also a lot of the calcium, the calcium is in the form of calcium carbonate, which is literally chalk. A lot of that doesn't actually get absorbed. It just goes straight through the gut, comes out the other side, and it makes stools much harder. Generally more difficult to pass, potentially more painful to pass. So it can cause, you know, a tendency towards constipation taking calcium tablets. In elderly people where their diet might not be so great, in that case, there's a case to be made for supplementing with not just vitamin D and calcium. Uh, sorry, not just vitamin D, but vitamin D and calcium because their diet might be deficient in calcium as well. Uh, but in younger people, uh, I would advise against vitamin D and calcium. Just take the vitamin D. And indeed, also, I advise against multi-vitamin multi supplements. So in chemists and supermarkets, you can buy supplements that contain a huge number of different vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, all of the different vitamins, and then a bunch of minerals as well. I don't advise you to take those. I advise just a vitamin D supplement. The multivitamins it's highly unlikely that you're deficient in those other, uh, in the other things in those multivitamins. And if you are deficient in, let's say, folic acid or B12 or iron, those are the other common nutrients, micronutrients that people can be deficient in. I advise that you take just a supplement containing those rather than taking a multivitamin. Multivitamins have been shown in over and over again in huge studies that they increase all-cause morbidity and mortality for reasons that aren't understood. I don't know why. 
they increase they have been shown to increase all cause morbidity and mortality and what that means is that they literally seem to make every medical condition worse um so we don't advise people to take multivitamins in particular there are some you know that uh, some of the vitamins, you know, are, very, are quite strong. Things like vitamin A, for instance, that has quite a powerful effect. Uh, we have taken vitamin A, modified it, and turned it into very powerful drugs that are used in dermatology and used to treat certain forms of cancer, and they're very powerful drugs. So, you know, it's possible that if you're taking, overloading yourself over years with vitamin A through multivitamins, that you may well be coming to harm from taking that multivitamin. So I don't advise multivitamins. I'm advising you to take just a vitamin containing vitamin D. As I say, we often do prescribe vitamin D with calcium, but that's pr not necessary if you're young. Um, it's m more necessary. The argument's more there for elderly people where their diet might be deficient in calcium as well. So I'm just advising a vitamin D supplement.